Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good Hello. afternoon. Let me know if you're hearing and seeing us clearly. Got my mic up here close. We're trying to get better sound than we've been getting. Anyway, I'm glad you're here with us today. Sissy and brother-in-law, good afternoon. Glad you're Hello here. Hello out there, everybody. Hope you had a good day today. Uh -huh. You got a runny nose, don't you? Yeah. And there's Didi and George. Hey, Didi. And there's Linda Linda. Linda Lee, <laughs> Linda, George. And there's John, John Greason in the house. And my Tiffany friend Tiffany's here. Thank you, John. He said, we're coming in loud and clear. Loud and clear. Wow, this has been a pretty pretty nice day. It's breezy here in the Carolina. It's cold. Well, you think it's cold. He thinks it's cold. And he well, he's had kind of had a little, well, little last two cold, days I've been in the bed. For, for the last couple of days. Yeah, it's had a little mm -hmm. cold. Well, it could be mixed with allergies too. You never know. This time of year. Thank you so much for letting us know that you can see and hear us clearly. You, you, do you want to blow? No, I'm just, you don't want to blow. Just have to keep going. All right, so if you hear him sniffling, you know why. You know why. And let's see, am I missing anything here? Okay, I just want to um, remind you guys that we are going to be discontinuing uh, impromptu um, for a while. I'm not sure for how long, but. Pastor and I need a break from doing so many on, online streaming uh, during the week. Our schedules are usually conflicting with other appointments we have. So we're going to postpone that that uh, session on Thursday that we normally have at 1230 uh, for a while, for a while. But we'll be back later on. But you can always still catch us on Tuesdays and Sundays. And I will mention this again at the end for those who may uh, be a little late coming in. So in the meantime, hey, bro, Kessler, I'm glad you're Good here. Good to see all of you. Yeah, it is, Tiffany, allergy season, definitely allergy season. But but I think you just got a little cold or something. But he's going to be all right. You are going to be all right, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You're not. I'll be all right and I go to bed. Are you go to bed. Mm -hmm. Oh my but I'm okay right now. You're okay right now. You got something good on your plate tonight? Yeah, I got something here right now. Yeah, John, you're right. He said we both need a break. We do. We really do. Uh, it's not so bad, but it's just, uh, it does wear on you after a while. We've been doing this since the pandemic started. Yeah, it's been a while. Hey, Noel. Glad you're here, sweetheart. Glad you're here. Good to see everybody. Yeah, yeah. Let's do our affirmation meditation, just something to get us in to the space that we need to be in in order to receive. Hello, Virginia. Good to see you, sweetheart. She said it's snowing where she is. Virginia, where are you? It's snowing. Oh, my goodness. Spring came in with a bang, didn't it? Spring came in with a bang. So let's do this. If you've been busy all day, then you need to take a break from your mind, break from your feelings for a moment. In fact, I think I want to do a different one. Let me just find it right quick. Let's find it right quick. The I am affirmation. That's the one I want. That's the one I want. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. Huh. And like I said, always leave your thoughts, your concerns, your aspirations. Put all of that aside. For this hour, you don't need any of that. Any of your concerns, let it just sit it on the side like you would an old pair of shoes. Just take your shoes off, put them on the side. You're going to put all your thoughts and concerns to the side because we can't do anything with them right here. And they're not useful here. Don't bring any imaginations into this. Don't, when we say these, I call them affirmations, meditations. But when we say this, we are not saying these things to try to make ourselves be these things. 
We are simply making statements, declarations of truth. We're not trying to become this. We are this. And we're just making a statement of truth, we're declaring the truth of, of who we are and what we are. So if you would, if you're in a place where you can do this, I want you to close your eyes and take in a deep breath. And center yourself, go deeper. And release that breath. And let all the tension go with it. Let all concerns go with it. And you can listen or you can simply repeat after me, whichever is best for you. I am not this body. I am not these thoughts. I am not any feeling. I am consciousness itself. I am the background upon which all things appear. I am not any form, but I am the essence of all forms. I am the space between thoughts. I want you to feel that. I am the space between thoughts. This space, this place is where I live. I am always here. No one can touch me. No one can enter here where I am. Even my mind cannot enter here. I may forget who I am. I may forget where I am. But I cannot forget that I am. I am this knowing that knows that I am. I give thanks to thee, O oh God, for my existence. I give thanks to thee, O oh God, for your presence. I give thanks to thee, O oh God, for this awareness, for the awareness of my existence. And I surrender the illusion of being a personal self. And so it is. And so it is. All right. What you got, young man? I ran across something here that's very significant. It was said in the book, the 17th chapter of John. It said this. Jesus made a statement in the 21st verse that they all may be one as thou father to in me and I in thee and they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And that statement he's saying totally opposite of what we've been taught in church He's saying that in oneness, unless it is fully implemented, oneness is the only way you're going to see Jesus in his fullness. He said that to the disciples in his prayer that they may be one. Father, in him and I in thee, in them, in he, in thee, they also may be one in us. Mm -hmm. He said us, 
two, three, four, five, ten us that that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. When they see Jesus, one of the reasons why you don't hear a lot of people in the brick and mortar talk about oneness is because the ego has set it up to not to not inclusive the union with Christ and the oneness with each other because it wants everybody to have a church next door to each other worshiping the same God, the same Christ, and yet ego is the one that built the church next to a church. Like everybody in each individual house has got a different Jesus or a different, different Christ. And he's telling them here, this is before in some places they teach in apostolic that the book of Acts of the coming of the Holy Spirit during that time was the only time that God dwelt in man other than what they've been taught. And he's telling you here that he is in everybody, whether they are apostolic, Presbyterian, Catholic, holiness, uh, church of God in Christ anywhere. Or not church at all. Or not church at all. Right. He said it here. He said his prayer was that they would wake up and see that all of the people that are dying in Jerusalem and Gaza, Gaza, how do you pronounce that word? Mm -hmm. And all the other countries that are killing children, they have no idea through blindness of the ego that they are killing a Christ in each one of them. The same thing that happened to Cain, if the story is correct, doesn't make any difference now. The meaning of it, when Cain killed Abel, the reason why it was so hard to, for him to kill his brother was because he's trying to kill a God or God essence. God's that, trying to kill God. God trying to kill God, and you can't do it mm -hmm. because of the eternal essence that we are. We are so eternal that even the word saying so eternal does not come anywhere close to striking the tone or the bell that rings inside of us so strong that it automatically overrides. Let me say it like this again. We are so awesome, struck by the light of God that he said, we are the light of the world. This light seems like it is not in us because of separation and individuality. Some want to go this way, want to say it that way. And if we don't do it a certain way, you don't have it. You can't get it except you come according to the way of the brick and mortar. It's absurd to believe, to believe even the lie that has been told us about God being only in people who receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior according to the vernacular of the church. This Christ that we are, there's only three things in this area of oneness that can only be done through this union. You can't do it in the ego and mean it. Eternal love, no judgment, and eternal forgiveness comes from the Christ in us and not from the words that come from our left brain sophisticated reasonings. It doesn't come because we read it in a book it doesn't come because we hear it preached every Sunday. It doesn't come because we are seeing it online tonight and have been saying it for some time. It comes because the Christ must reveal itself as Jesus said, that they may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, and they also may be one in us 
that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are. He was telling them that they were, he was telling himself this prayer that Jesus was praying was being prayed to the Father and the Father was him and he was his high self talking to his high self from a degrade of level of lowness to highness and highness back down. He was switching from oneness to separation, individuality back and forth to one separated one and two and three making his point which is the key i in them thou and me that they may be made perfect he's saying that we used to hear people say none is perfect but the father but if the father and the christ consciousness is who we are as our real self then that part of us is perfection you're not to step outside of anything else other than that perfect self trying to say out of false humility, none is perfect but the Father. Okay, if none is perfect but the Father, and if the Father is in you before you receive Jesus Christ, let me back up and say it like this. There's not a person, a being, a body in, it, in this whole world that don't know Christ. Okay. Yeah. Everybody yeah. coming to this universe and other planets before the foundation of the world, he said, Father, I have been with you and you with me and they have been with me before the foundation of the world. We all come to this dimension downloading into a low vibrational frequency to wake up to the highest part of us which is the Christ in us. Now, here's another one. One of the reasons why you can't see Christ as one is because he is so close mm -hmm. that in order for that to be seen, he has to be holographed, projected out of us to stand from inside of us, in front of us, in front of his self to turn and look at his self. Here's what I wrote. It's called giving up your personal history in order to see your union with Christ, with oneness. Mm -hmm. God is the greatest gift you will receive from your real self. God is the greatest gift you will receive from your real self or from himself. Self-discovery is complete is complete when we see God from himself back to his self. Discovering Jesus is a compliment. Discovering the true self is a compliment to God yeah. from himself back to his self that we have found our true identity. In his living book, which is himself, not this paper, not this ink, I don't care what book it was printed in, in his living book, which is himself, God is the divine author. God is the author and the finisher of every last one of us as the living Christ book. We are God's encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. We are God's divine word wrapped in flesh, wrapped in a suit. My God, no one can see this until you, God, is ready to reveal himself. You're not going to find this because you, because I teach it, because I said it. You're not going to find this because you went to the church and the preacher preached it. A lot of people are preaching this and talking this and teaching this, and they still haven't caught it. But it's grace, and it's not greasy grace. We want the greasy grace to be, you know, I was in church the other day, and the preacher said something and talked about being one with God. How can we be one with God, and we still got so many things wrong with us? How can we be one with God, and I still drink, smoke, dip, and chew, and hang around everybody else to do? 
How can God be one with us if I just got out of jail? How can God be one with us if I just killed somebody or I just run over a cat or a dog and destroy the family in relationship with an animal? How can we be one with God if I just got angry a few minutes ago? How can we be one with God if I woke up this morning and found out that I was in jail or I did something that I can never be forgiven for? How can we be one if somebody talked to me and I talk hateful to them? How can we be one with God if I tell somebody a lie? How can we be one with God if I'm never telling the truth? How can we be one with God and I'm on drugs? How can we be one? Oh, boy, I feel this. How can we be one if I just came out of a prostitute house? How can we be one with God if I just slept with a woman that's not my wife and I'm going with another lady and another man? How can we be one and be homosexuality? How can we be one with God and men loving men? How can we be one with God? And all of these things are listings of beyond words that I can say. How can we be one with God? Jesus said we are. Yeah. Regardless, that should tell you. You know what? I risk my case because I can't say it fast enough for it to be seen. Here's another one. And now you heard me talk about this. I step in the shower. I look around and the water is bright and clear. I, I, I look and I say, wow, my vision is healed. I can see clearly. The sun is out. The sun is shining. I'm in the shower. I can see the water is crystal clear. Then all of a sudden it come to me while I'm in the shower. The reason why I'm seeing so clear I didn't take my glasses off before I got in there. <laughs> and then when I took my glasses off, I said, oh, shucks. Doggone it. That was my glasses doing it. But that's a good example of how we can't see ourselves as oneness with God. It will be shown and will be seen. The definition of the word mystery, I used to give it all the time in my classes in the brick and mortar. The mystery word, Jesus speak mysteries. We pray in the spirit, we speak mysteries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The definition in vine word dictionary, those things that are out of the range of natural understanding that can be only discerned by divine revelation, divine intervention at such a time that God sees fit. At such a time that the Christ as us sees fit to reveal it to the mind mm -hmm. from the heart to the mind from the left brain to the right brain from the rooter to the tutor until it is revealed by insight no one can see this without the eyes of god and the eyes of god is the big eye and that big eye is what he's told moses tell pharaoh that i am have sent you and that i am that i'm talking to now is online with us now. I'm talking to myself when I talk to the Blues, to the Armstrongs, to the Jeffreys, to the Carters, to the Langdon, to Christine's, and all of the list of Sandras and all the Sawyers. I'm talking to the same Christ in each one of us that Jesus said that you are one with him. Now watch this. You are one with him if you're born deformed. You're one with him if you're born with no legs, no sight. Even Stevie Wonder is one with him. Beyonce is one with him. You can't see it because it has not been revealed yet. You can't believe that you're one because you just looked at something on television that was not of God. That oneness cannot be destroyed or wiped out by anything you do in your ego mind that gives off the idea that you have displeased God in any way. That oneness is there. 
I'm glad I was able to say that part to you. By the grace of God. 50 years ago, I wouldn't have said this. I went to a, a service yesterday, no, uh, Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the old service that I hadn't been in in a long time. And Miss Tiffany is on with us tonight. When I walked into that church, that was an ordination service. I hadn't been in one of those in years. But when I walked in the building, they weren't expecting me. But I realized after I got there that some of the people remembered us way back when we were in our 20s. And here we are in our 70s. And they remembered when we used to sit people down in chairs, measure their legs, and without even touching them, their legs would grow out even to with the other one. They remembered the time. They brought back such an ancient memory. They made me feel like I was an ancient soul. And while we were there, I ministered to a young man who needed a job. And he didn't know that I was going to tell him about the job. He didn't know I was going to tell him about the way he had been through certain things. And I told him, and that blessed him. But I saw healing presence take place inside of me. <coughs> Excuse me. I wanted to grab everybody in that church and hug them and minister to them, but I knew that I couldn't. And, and Ms. Tiff, you tell the pastor and Jerrica, when I come back, if, I, if I'm still here in this dimension, I want to sit them down in a chair and I want to show them and I'll let them do it. I'll let them do it with the same Christ in them that's in me and everybody in the church. I will set them down and put them in a chair and show them how to see the miracle presence of our union with Christ cause the same thing to happen to them that I used to do thousands of years ago in Christ. I look forward to telling everybody that what I learned in the brick and mortar before we found out what we're talking about now was a very strategic moment of our life. And I learned so much about how to work the works of God in the miraculous physical world. I want to thank all of you out there tonight, today, this evening, and over the times and the weeks and the years that we've been together online. I want to thank you for your faithfulness your honesty, your integrity, to come online to listen to two people who are perfect, but yet in weakness, we find our strength in the Christ consciousness. Thank you so much for supporting us. And that is what I have to say tonight about this oneness. Well, am I going to get a chance to say Yes. Are you, you, well, you, you done? No, I'm done. I'm oh, done. my goodness. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead, baby. I'm done. Yeah. Really? I, I am. I'm done. You said something uh, Sunday. Yeah. And that really stuck with me. Yeah. And you, you made it. I, I think you made this statement kind of casually, just getting to another point. But you yeah. said something about unlock unlocking the vault of the mind. Oh. Because inside this human mind lies the mind of Christ. Yeah. And it's in every one of us, buried deep inside of us, mm -hmm. covered by all of mm -hmm. our conditionings, mm -hmm. covered by all of our uh, illusions, mm -hmm. perceptions. Um, it's covered by our, our preferences, our covenants, it's, it's veiled by all of the beliefs, uh, religious beliefs, some not, a, not even religious beliefs, but beliefs about myself, uh, beliefs about the, the kind of person we are is covered and veiled by that. But that Christ is in every last one of us. Some of us, thank God, thankfully have come to the place of seeing what we are and 
who we are and know now that when we see one another, we are looking at Christ. We know that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been graced, as you said, to be able to see that. Yeah. We have also been graced to be able to see and now not just believing, but knowing that this whole world that we call our world is simply an illusion and a dream. Um, I rem recalling a, a scripture that just came to me this week. I've read it a million times, but this this time reading it, I, my eyes opened to what it was really saying. And it's in Hebrews 11, 3. It says, through faith, we understand mm -hmm. that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Yeah. So that the things which are seen, this is the key, the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So that's that right there is a scripture, a scripture reference in the Bible that's telling you this is a dream. That's right. This is all a dream. It is all a dream. If it is, in fact, a dream, then everything that has ever been done, good or bad, has simply been done in a dream. And in a dream, nothing is real. Nothing is ever real. There is nothing real. Nothing that is real can ever be threatened. And I remember that from the Course in Miracles. That's right. So the, if, if, in fact, we are dealing with issues in our personal life, those are simply the challenges that we've chosen in our obstacle course, our sacred obstacle course, coming to this earth as an imagining of God, Mm -hmm. coming into this earth, playing the roles that God desires to play through and by our form, we are now living, moving, and having our being in God. There's nothing outside of God. Nothing outside. Nothing is outside of God. Nothing is out there. The, the kingdom or everything that we're looking for is inside of us. It's all inside. And it's, when I say inside, I don't mean in this body because we, the, 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 the true essence of what we are is not even limited to this body. It's not confined in this body, even though we have the sensation that it's confined in this body, mm -hmm. but it is still not no, confined it's not in this it's body. It's not confined just in this body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that means that there is... An unlimited seeing that can take place in all of us. That self-realization, not only self-realization, but God-realization of what is real and what is not real. And so when there's a, uh, another scripture that I want to stop, baby girl, there's another scripture in Colossians 3. Stop, baby girl. You made her do that. She's over there scratching. Don't, 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 don't make her do that. She's scratching the carpet over there. She, I know, but she's you nesting. Know. That's nesting instinct, baby. That's all right. No, she's it's okay. not. She's doing it because she knows you got your attention. Yeah. She's anyway, okay. in the she's Colossians okay. 3 and 11, um, up above there yeah. in the 10th verse, it says, yeah. And have put on the new man, which mm -hmm. is renewed in knowledge mm -hmm. after the image of him that created him. Mm -hmm. And the 11th verse, it says, it start, it's strange that this verse starts with the word where. It says, where there is neither Greek nor yeah. Jew. Nah. Where there is circumcision nor uncircumcision. Where there is barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free. But Christ is all and in all. So it's a it's a where, it's a location, it's a a, a dimension of awareness mm -hmm. where there are no opposites. Yeah. Where there are no uh there's no segregation, there's no compartmentalization, there's no separation. No separation. Christ is all and in all. That's the part that that's the part that gets me. We'll say Christ is all, but he's in all as well. That's right. And that's that's people who've been in church, no matter what denomination, no matter what sect of religion. And that's people who've never been in church at all. 
That's right. And it's 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 a a whole different world that we live in when you live in that world of one. Yeah. I had a statement I made here. The key is stop trying to make sense out of this oneness. You can't. It's not for the mind. But it is locked up in the mind. It is. But we all have, there's another scripture that says we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. We have it. And then when you jump over the fence and say, Beyond having the mind of Christ, we are that yes. Mind. yes, yes. Learn that you and God are the same light beings. Start investigating. Mm -hmm. Start investigating the you. Mm -hmm. And the perfect seat inside of yourself where Christ is seated in rest on the inside of all of us. Investigate the place inside of you where Christ is sitting, seat, seated. He is seated inside of us. He is the perfect light that we all are. And I'm sorry if, if you don't think he's there. That's that's okay. You can't handle this crazy talk. It's okay. But I can promise you this. You will see it either here or there. Mm -hmm. Or one day you look in the mirror. Or one day you'll be riding in a car and it'll dawn on you. Some people are gifted to know this and see this, some people can see it one second and lay it aside the next. Mm -hmm. And all the teaching that you could get into on demonology and deliverance will be wiped out into another dimension when you wake up to your Christ self. You can find out that some of these things that are darkness can be handled in a different way by waking up to your union with Christ more so than operating in separated ministries. Separated ministries is okay. It has its place. But there is a place where individual churches and individualities of people who wants to be testimonies and witness to other people, one of the greatest gifts I've ever seen Christ do was when I walked up to somebody and told them that I see God in them. Didn't have to know anything about who I was, where I came from, and why I'm saying it. I just said it. Don't sometimes they don't have to say anything. I'm talking about a settlement where you do not have to use common sense to try to convince anybody that you are a child of God. And it still works. Ah, oh, we're supposed to go around the world and all over the nation. Yes, yes, that's one way, but that's not the only way. He said he was the way, the truth, and the life, I meaning he many ways. There are many paths that leads up to the top of the mountain. When I was in the council room, I saw all forms of religious sages and teachers who had been on earth for many lifetimes sitting in the council room around the council table and part of the council board <coughs> excuse me and each one of them operate out of love and linda mentioned something while we were talking and she says the body mm -hmm. is part of the dream too yes this whole uh awareness of being in a body or as a body is all a part of the dream as well and so it's it's like we are dreaming this dream, or I should say, I won't even say we are dreaming this dream. Okay, don't God be... is dreaming. Yeah, there dream. we go. God is dreaming us into existence. He's imagining us into existence. God is. This is all God's. This is all movie. This is God. This movie. is all of God's non-logical self. 
Right. Right. Non-logical self. Being yeah. saved is not enough to see our soul contract. Yeah. Our soul contract is never, I would not ever believe that there was a contract that we feel out in our divine self before coming here if I had stayed in the four walls of religion. You, you, you made me think of something. I don't know how I want to say it. Okay. All right. In, in the imaginings of God, before God imagined us as a form, as a soul, as a being, we didn't collaborate. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Before God imagined us as a soul, a being, a spirit, or whatever, we were born of God as a spirit. So before God imagined us as a separate unit in a form, mm -hmm. there was no need for a collaboration because mm -hmm. there was not two of us. That's right. That's right. God is only one. Mm -hmm. So the 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 imaginings of God into the forms that we are now is when the so the sacred contracts were collaborated because we were then being projected into a dimension that appears we are separate from God and appears that God is not in it. Every one of us came here under a degree of our sacred contract downloaded into the essence of our eternal self to eventually look over certain things at a certain point with this contract. <laughs> To understand why things happen to us that cause us to grow or to move up toward our light self. Can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead. happening to me. I'm actually coming to a place where I'm not even asking why anymore. That's right. I'm, I'm not even interested in why. When anything happens, I don't ask the question, why? It isn't important to me right now why it happened. Whether it's part of my contract or not part of my contract, it doesn't matter if it, in other words, what I'm attempting to do in the awareness, in my awareness, this awareness, is to remain as one. Yeah. If, if I slip out of that, then all of that means something to me. What my contract says, is this in my sacred script? Is, why is this happening to me? Why does this, all of that only means something to me when I'm seeing myself separate and apart. When I'm one, when I remain as one, that I know that's what I truly am, then oh, none of that even has any, any bearing. I want to know why do I feel separation since separation, knowing that I am one. And he said that yeah. we separation is a school to reveal to us mm -hmm. what it is like when Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Here's what he said. All of a sudden, all these weeks and months that I've been in oneness consciousness, all of a sudden, I slip back into separation from my father, my higher self, to experience what these people are experiencing on earth. And now it is time for me to make a final decision through seeing separation that I hunger enough for the oneness consciousness to want to go back to that place and never leave again. When you have had enough of separation, there is nowhere else to go but back home. And home is, I am now one 
with the place that I came from. And I don't want to go back to anything else. I hear a lot of people in my near death studies say once they got home, they had to be made to come back here mm -hmm. and was told that once you get back to your body, you will feel the pain. And a lot of people come back to their bodies in suffering and don't want to stay here because they have had enough of separation from their true identity. Yes, yes. This is the reason why separation is a school that teaches us how to get back home. Well, and let's 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 question what is let's question what is the we, what is the us. If in fact God is playing all parts, it is God waking up realizing that it is not the form that is moving around and playing these parts. It is that these forms are simply suits and garments that God is wearing. And God wakes up in these suits and garments and realizes that he's God. Mm -hmm. Not God in the sky, but God in the middle. And so, because God has diversified itself into not into, but as everything that we see, mm -hmm. everything that we see. I want to, uh, and forgive us if we don't communicate this well. It's hard to sometimes see something and try to communicate it yeah, when it, there's it is, no, it no earthly example in our language to communicate it. It's, it's difficult. When you when you speak from the seeing, and you're at that in and you're speaking from oneness, it is a it is a difficult thing to do to it communicate is. it to communicate. It. Now I want to mention this these comments on it. Okay. Linda says uh, when we remember our nightly dreams, we use all of our five senses in the dream. We see, talk, hear in dreams, but it takes place. In the mind, yeah, our waking state is the same. Yeah. It's all taking place in the mind. Amen, amen, Linda. And she said, "That's why all things are possible with God." Yes, exactly. So I, I'm, I dare say that it's not an us, a separate us that's waking up, but it is God waking up. God waking up from His own game. From his own time. That old saying, old song where you sing, Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. Mm -hmm. What's the words of that? You know the words to it? Yeah, but my mind's somewhere else yeah. right yeah. now. That, I'm thinking of when while you were saying that, I'm I'm I was thinking of someone who decides to be an actor and they take a part, a, a part in a movie or a play, and they decide they're gonna play that character. That's exactly what God has done. He's playing the characters. He's take, playing the part. But when that one goes home from the play and from the and from that stage where they've had to do that, they are no longer that character. They were never that character, but they played that character. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I see oneness. Well, it's there. I mean, they, and, and and you know, I used to think that uh, I had to go to church every Sunday. In order to keep up my uh, keep up my relationship with God, mm -hmm. I go to Sunday school mm -hmm. and feel good when you come home. Mm -hmm. Until you come back to a shotgun house and then <laughs> you go to work on Monday and the machine break up, and you start running bad product. And so, the boss man, till life happens. Life happens when life but, starts happening. You lose all of that. Yeah. 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 Now, I, the, the last three days I've been in bed and sneezing and coughing and, and all that kind of stuff. And I haven't felt too good in my body, but I am still. Your body hasn't felt good. The body, mind has felt good. Hasn't felt but good. I know something. And I've, I've noticed this about myself. When I identify strongly with my body and the body doesn't feel good, I feel like I don't feel good. But it's not. It's really not you that doesn't feel good. It's the mm -hmm. body itself. Yeah. It's the body. Because the moment something happens that takes your mind off yourself, you start to feel better. Mm -hmm. Your, the symptoms disappear. 
I used to ask my uncle, I say, Uncle Gid, his name was Gid Shore. Yeah. I said, Uncle Gid, uh, you got everything tied down? He said, yes, sir. I said, you got it tied down? Is it tied down and you're holding it? He said, yes, I'm holding it. It's tied down and I'm holding it in the middle of the road. I said, if you got it tied down tight, he said, I'm tying it down on the right side of the road and the left side <laughs> of the road. And I'm holding in the middle. I said, you got it on? And he said, yeah. And it's working, too. <laughs> I used to love to hear him say that. He said, yeah, it is it's working, too. Jesus said that in my father's house, there are many mansions. If you, you paraphrase that, it's many dimensions. There are many dimensions. We are more than likely speaking from, <laughs> we're not speaking from the third dimension. We're think, speaking, actually speaking from the fifth and sixth, even more so dimension, uh, where the language, the language that we have in the third dimension doesn't even fit it. No. Listen to this. God is our contract looking back at us from inside of us. God is our contract inside of us looking back at himself as him he is us looking back at himself that's why you, you you can't put your hand out here and say hmm i can't believe that's god you're not supposed to you're supposed to see it because you know something it's a, deep it's a dream body it's a dream body that god created mm -mm. This is what it means for everyone to see him as he is. Mm -hmm. I said to you the other day, if I happen to leave and go to heaven and you go to hell, I'll come to hell to get you out. And if I go to hell and I see you in heaven, I'm coming to get you, babe. I ain't going to leave you anywhere that I ain't. Because if you is, I am, and I am, you is, and I will find you and pull you to me. And I said, what are you fishing for? You know what you do? You know you I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, try, you must be wanting something. You get you up to something. That's what you said, you <laughs> rascal. You you know, you know I'm going to have to call the boss man on you. I can tell you that. The yeah. boss man. I'm going to tell the boss man on you. You think you will get another raise. That's what it is. <laughs> but I'll buy you some tennis shoes. <laughs> oh, my God. I might not want tennis shoes. Well, I'll buy you a hot dog. Game. I might not want a hot dog. Well, what you want? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't go there, girl. <laughs> I'll buy you another puppy. I don't want another puppy. Yeah, that, that, this, uh -oh. no, I don't doing? want another this puppy. This puppy here doesn't. She don't went in the house, ain't she? You stirred her up now. She's yeah, soaking. She's, a, she's something else. Hey, <laughs> John Greeson, <laughs> I know you by name. Yes, you do. Yes, Your you name do. is Christ Greeson. <laughs> well, guys, we're going to take off here. Uh, and we appreciate oh, we appreciate your coming in and you so us much. for thank this you hour. So you you could have been anywhere else, and we thank you for yeah. choosing to be here with us. Miss Tiff, you, you tell them pastors over at church I want to come back and see them. I really I really appreciate that time I had on Sunday. Okay. That was Saturday, wasn't it? Yes. That was Saturday. Okay, and my wife wants me to stop now because it's time to go. I don't want you to stop. Yeah, I know, but we we could go. I, on. But I would like you not talk right over me. I'm gonna talk <laughs> over you every time. You sure will. You, you mind, ain't you? Yeah. I got papers on you. Really? You know where they are? I can go find them. You know where they are? I don't know the combination. <laughs> I, I had to take my hammer and bust it open. I don't know where the papers at. <laughs> and they ain't far. How you know? They right upstairs. You know. You, you mess up. You go. You messed up. I find them papers. Find them. Go find Go find <laughs> You don't mean that. You just cutting up with me. I go find them. I know what the combination is. Oh my we got them papers in a safe oh that won't God, burn. You are a mess. We can take them paperwork to hell and they won't burn. Hey, put on your asbestos suit and walk through hell and brimstones. And it won't burn these papers I got on you. Okay. 
Okay. My God. He's going to talk that talk. Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys for supporting us. Thank you. <laughs> Those of you who have given offerings. Yes. yes uh, thank you for the week. gift and of God. Thank you for the cash app. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, you can see how to do that without my uh, repeating all of that. And Jill's already, hey, Jill, Jill, she already posted how you can do that. Baby, you stir baby girl up. He stirred her up and she's been in here scratching the carpet. She ain't in her room. She's in her room. In her she's cage. in her cage. She goes in there because she's saying, okay. Not they ain't going to pay me no attention. I guess I'll go right, to bed. Right, right. She'll right. come out in a minute. You watch. Mm -hmm. She know we're talking about her too. It said John said he knew you would be feeling better about it, you know, but that's what I mean. <laughs> you get your mind off yourself. All of oh, a sudden, John, you, you, you're, you're not the you're, one you're, that feels John, bad. I tell you, I can see your face now. I can see you <laughs> laughing and cutting up with me. John, next time I see you, brother, we're going to have a good time. Man. Listen, right. I want to repeat that uh, we're going to be postponing, and I say postponing because we may be back. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, but we may be back for impromptu on Thursdays at 1230. It will be truly an impromptu when it happens. And so you better stay tuned and watch for the announcements in any event that we do go live. Pastor uh, Norman has a lot of things on his plate. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that we all survive this that we got to do and do well with it. We'll be back. Linda, Linda says she, she's going to miss it. And I appreciate that. I really Thank do appreciate. So she says she's gonna miss impromptu, and I really appreciate that. We're gonna we're gonna miss having the conversation with Pastor Norman every week, and so we you might catch us doing it a few times depending on what our schedules are like. And we're feeling really uh, full of a lot of energy. We might come in here and do some stuff, but in the meantime, we are going to be discontinuing it for just a little while. We'll be here on, on, on Tuesdays and definitely Sunday be morning. Yeah, definitely. They're still doing Tuesdays and Sundays. And thank you again for being so faithful with us. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And we love you. We'll see you next time on okay. Sunday. We'll see 10. you on the turnaround. Bye, guys.